we had a couple things that we'd started to build in the boat that needed a little bit of re-engineering. Sun Reef was just fantastic at really being on top of their vendors and knowing what we could and should expect. Before any great ship is built, a considerable amount of work and thought must be given to the design. We'll be taking a look at the behind the scenes of the design of the 80 Sun Reef Power Eco. We managed the delivery of this yacht for an owner who had a clear vision, a sustainable vessel that doesn't compromise on style. In the owner's words, the 80 Sun Reef Power Eco benefits from a sustainable design that is also aesthetically appealing to an increasing audience of aware consumers. Let me introduce you to two key players who helped bring this project to life. Lane Borges and Kevin O'Brien. I'm a building architect, have been in a career for over 30 years designing commercial and residential buildings in California. My name is Kevin O'Brien. Uh, my company, O'Brien Design Group, is based in Massachusetts, and I've been an interior designer for about 20 years. What made Sun Reef unique is we had to make all the selections for the equipment that was going to go on board, for the materials that were going to be used, how the boat was going to be laid out, and really how it was going to operate for the owner. Seoul was a great opportunity, and I think the team that we assembled with Staley's guiding hand and help uh, resulted in just an outstanding product and something that I'm proud to have my name associated with and I think all of us on the team feel that way. I had no interest in getting into traditional diesel, ice kind of transportation, all the emissions, the fumes, the noise, and we'd been, frankly, investing around climate solutions for Eight, eight or nine years now. So I really had a problem with traditional boat design. And we were also very aware of the kind of technologies that were scaling in areas is like automobiles. To me, I, I was like potentially interested if there was something that was cleaner and greener. You felt it was possible. You just weren't sure what's the best solution. The challenge put to me in terms of thinking about durability, performance, luxury, which I knew very well going into, was that there wouldn't be any animal products, there wouldn't be any wool, there wouldn't be any leather. We also tried to utilize wood products that were FSC certified or came from renewable forests, stone materials or materials that were composite that utilized byproducts of manufacturing process so they had less impact and were less energy dependent for their manufacturing. The usual consideration that I have when selecting for projects is trying to minimize the amount of freight and transatlantic shipment. Usually a lot of these brands that we work with, these higher end hospitality brands for synthetic velvets and synthetic wovens and synthetic linens and you know, all these things, they're, they're mostly all milled in Europe. So in this case, that actually really helped us achieve that goal of minimizing the travel distances uh, in that those were coming from European countries. All of our soft goods came from European mills um, to Sun Reef directly. When it came to furniture, we did the reverse and we shipped them all here. You know, that stuff, you know, did not go to Poland first to be installed and shipped back to us. So we were trying to sort of really manage as best we could to the sort of local continent, at least where we were working. The owners had particular design objectives in terms of functionality that was reflected in the arrangement of the boat and the way that we designed it. Some of those solutions did involve moving some bulkheads, uh, moving some stairways. So it was really a combination of, you know, owner's requirements for design, layout, and functionality, uh, respect for selection of materials that were energy efficient and had the least impact on the environment in order to arrive at an ultimate product that was as efficient and environmentally sensitive as, as we could make it. I want us to start first with the design meeting which is a substantial kind of kickoff for the project. It normally does involve three days at the shipyard. We have an opportunity to usually tour some boats that are in progress and some boats that are maybe near completion. And in some cases, owners will see things that they 
may or may not choose to incorporate, but it's a good opportunity for people to be exposed to other alternatives and other options that are out there. We try to use that design meeting to uh, resolve a few different things, kind of develop the mood board, and that's all the material selections, all the aesthetics things on the boat that you touch and feel and, and you see. And having the owner's designer with us allowed us to be able to do that over that three-day period. The fabric we did for the sofa. Okay, there's our sofa. And is this, how resistant is this to stain? A little bit of contrast. Well, now what's the ceiling in the cockpit? It's um, primarily um, the cash, it's also the but it's this. Oh, good. So it's, this is our salon. Over the table. And this is the salon. This is the ceiling. salon ceiling. Yeah. I really wanted a very sort of natural, sun bleached. The I think the phrase I used for it was a a creamy and sun bleached palette, which is harder to achieve using synthetic materials. It's very very hard to get that. Those textured acrylics hold up really, really well. Do they? Much yeah. better than a flat umbrella. Okay. They're much more forgiving. And we will be picking up like some extra pillows. So for on the back. But so the the we kind of sent that direction in terms of materials. We've given a sense of like the types of wood tones, stone finishes, things like that that we wanted to work with. And when we got there and walked in, and the Sunreef designers had laid out this huge conference table, it was so evident that they had put tremendous thought and and really had listened to what we wanted and so there was a very small discard pile usually when i am sort of directing design on a project if i'm not designing it you know when everything is sort of laid out for approval it's there's you know half the day is spent like well this is definitely out this is definitely out but it in some ways it was harder because they had so many fantastic options. No, this is better. Well, yes. Okay. Well, that was easy. The more trust as a designer that the owner puts in you, the less money they will spend because it'll be the less time you spend. How many uh, people are in your uh, design team at, uh, at Sunreef? 10 people, 10 designers, and we are divided on uh, certain projects, which means that each designer is assigned to the certain client and we are leading the process from the beginning up till the end. This is like building house or making apartment. It's it's huge process. It's like big thing for, for the clients. We also try to use that design meeting to resolve a lot of the arrangement issues and discuss options. So during that design meeting was when we went through the process of analyzing the location of the spa and looking at alternative placement on the fly bridge and forward. And those meetings are really helpful because we come up with ideas, we can sketch things out. They can then go to their engineering departments to determine whether some of the ideas are feasible or whether they involve engineering challenges that may or may not be surmountable and a rough idea of the potential time and cost impacts of those things. So these design meetings that we hold right up front this kickoff is really an integral part that sets the project in motion in the correct direction. I had the pleasure to collaborate with Lane. Lane is working on the layouts. That's our kind of preliminary documents that we are developing in 3D during design process. We are creating 3D models for interior cabins. The drawings are very detailed and thanks to the Lane's drawings that are coming much earlier, uh, we already know where and how to arrange the space in 3D. Each furniture freestanding that you can see here, they are waterproof, weatherproof, uh, stainless resistant. It's not that obvious because a lot of clients are entering the room and saying, oh my God, if this certain fabric can be really used on the yacht. Yes, can be because each fabric, each material has like this, the highest quality and all these features that they let us to use it on the yacht. I am sort of first and foremost driven by a desire for sort of a feeling of hospitality and a feeling of gathering and warmth. And that sort of always factors greatly into like arrangements and the ability to flex between a big crowd and smaller, more intimate groups. You know, it feeling comfortable and familiar to a wide variety of people that anybody stepping on board would immediately feel sort of at ease and comfortable and that it wasn't too precious an interior. You know, I find really 
uncomfortable as a guest when I go somewhere and I'm afraid of spreading out or I'm afraid of sitting somewhere in particular. I just, it, it, it goes against every sort of core of what I think good design is about. Um, you know, and part of that is a mix of really fine, exquisite things with humble things and natural materials. And when you have something new, you have to make sure you bring in enough dirty. You got to bring in enough raw wood. You got to bring in enough age because it gives you a feeling that the space was built over time and with love and with thought and not, you know, somebody was there an hour before the party peeling price tags off of everything and peeling plastic off of it. You know, it feels is a very different experience when you go into a space that has some even if it's sort of artificially created pedigree you know we're i think we're we as people are sort of drawn to that the materials in this boat will not would not look out of place in the world no matter where this boat is in the world a big part of this is like the same way i think about it in resorts where you're like if the doors are swung open what's outside and what's inside should feel like they belong in the same place the palette was neutral enough to let whatever is happening outside sort of be the star and this be a supporting player because ultimately that is what it's about otherwise you would just go to a beautiful hotel suite so another one of the design elements that we kind of customized or modified on soul was the flybridge spa uh, sunreef began offering a flybridge spa kind of early on, but not on all of the original 80s. But their standard design initially was a round spa that was placed at the rear of the flybridge. The round spa was quite sizable and it took up a fair amount of the usable space. So we initially started exploring alternatives to that by looking at smaller and more rectangular or square spas. And for Seoul, we actually looked at several different arrangements, including a couple of different places on the flybridge, and ultimately working out a location on the bottle. One of the advantages of that is it opened up the flybridge for just more open space. It was a little bit of an engineering challenge, and Sunreef did a great job in coming up with a design that allowed us to place the spa forward. Uh, just in front of the panograph door, and that's where you'll find it on Seoul. On a normal Sunreef 80 power, the Bimini stops here. On the Eco boats, this is the first one. This is the first Bimini that they've ever built like this. So this Bimini goes all the way to the back. The bar modules we were looking at were the standard ones from Sunreef that were about, about this big but it didn't really have enough space. And as soon as you put a sink in there, then you had limited counter space and we weren't able to fit in all the storage because before everything was filled up with the ice maker, the fridge, and then here we've got a grow blue that makes sparkling water and chilled water, highly filtered and UV sterilized and everything else right out of the tap here. So we've learned through our prior experience in yachting to have a large buffet surface. We like to do family style, especially at lunch. And so we can put out lots of options here. Uh, and for particularly large cocktail parties, we'll have a lot of appetizers out here. And we felt let's keep lounging space over there and let's use this corner at the top of the stairs, which is a little bit of a dead corner. And it makes it easy for the servers to just come up and supply this from below. Yeah, this was a great collaboration between uh, you and your wife's desire to have this space and then Lane, our designer, and Sunreef's uh, design team to actually make all this uh, happen. There were really kind of three elements or three issues related to the solar cells and the electric engines. The first one I'm just going to talk about were the engines themselves. Because the owners wished to get a little bit more output, they opted for a dual motor arrangement as opposed to a single. And the dual motor arrangement then impacted basically both of the sternmost or aftmost locations on the boat. We did a variety and a series of different computer generated illustrations showing what the aesthetic of the boat would be looking at cells just on the hulls, just on the bimini, on the uh, coach roof of the uh, flybridge and paint color of the hull itself. And as you saw, the entire ceiling of this has solar on it. So we're able to get additional solar 
and you don't see the panels around the side. We talked about in our in our design having solar around the top of the uh, the coach roof and, and a little bit more on the hull. You can see on the uh, on the coach roof on the normal uh, Sunreef 80 powers. These are windows across here and we have solar. And then on the on the forward edge of that, I think you saw when we were uh, up on the fore deck, there's solar around there. And that's that's all meaningful solar having all that space there. Yeah, so we got our 21 kilowatts of solar capacity, 80 square meters, I think is the number. Um, and we accomplished that with those spaces that you're referencing. Because at the end of the day, not only does the boat need to be functional, the owner and, and all of us involved in the project wanted the boat to be beautiful. And I think at the end of the day, we were able to achieve that. So the collaboration with, with Kevin, our client's interior designer, with Lane, uh, our designer that we've used for our builds, and then with Sunreef's in-house design team, you know, this is what you get. And uh, I couldn't imagine anything better in this space.